In this clip, I want to quickly show how we can actually predict the true mean from uh, or the range of the true mean of a set of data. So let's assume we have uh, some uh, observations, some measurements, whatever these measurements are. So let's say we have we measure 10, 15, 20, and again 15. And we say, okay, this is the measurements that come from a certain experiment. But we could have done this experiment not just four times, we could have done it 10 times, 100 times, a million times. Uh, and we would like to know what would be the outcome, where would be the true mean of these data if we had done the experiment a billion times. So what we do now is we treat our measurements as a sample of a far bigger population. So a sample of large population. Large population. And this large population would be all the experiments uh, that could be done under these conditions. So what we do in the first place is we try to calculate the mean of our sample here. And we know that uh, sample mean is very easy uh, calculated. So we call this x bar because uh, we are dealing with a sample and all we need to do is we just simply uh, add up our observations 10 plus 15 plus 20 plus 15 and divide by the number of observations that we have. So our number of observations n would be 4. So we just simply divide it by 4. We add up the numbers here and that gives us 60 divided by 4 and that is 12.5. So our mean of the sample is 12.5. Now we also want to do a little bit of uh, looking at the spread of the samples and for that we calculate the variance. And uh, the variance has, uh, in general, can be calculated as we take each observation and subtract from it the sample mean, square it, and divide by n minus 1. This n minus 1, that is characteristic when we deal with samples. So let's just quickly do that. So our first observation uh, is 10 minus 15, that's our sample mean squared, plus second observation, 15 minus the sample mean squared, plus 20, that's the third observation, minus the mean, the sample mean squared, plus the fourth observation, 15 minus the sample mean squared, divided by n minus 1. So n was 4, so we have to, have to divide it by 3. Now let's see what we get from that. 10 minus 15, that gives us negative negative 5 squared plus 15 minus 15, that gives us 0 squared, plus 20 minus 15, that gives us positive 5 squared, plus 15 minus 15, that gives us 0 squared. We divide it by 3. So what have we got? Negative 5 squared gives us 25 plus 0 plus 25 
plus 0 divided by 3, and that gives us uh, 50 divided by 3 equals 16.67. So that would be our variance for the sample. And we can now also calculate the standard deviation. So that's usually abbreviated for a sample with an S. So that is the standard deviation. And the standard deviation is nothing else just by simply the square root of the variance. And in this case, this is the square root of 16.67. And if we put that in the calculator, this would give us a standard deviation of 4.08. So that is our standard deviation. Now we can, uh, with this, with this data, we can now predict in which range the true mean is of our population. So where is, let me write this down, uh, where is the true mean of the whole population. So not just for this small sample of four measurements, but for all the measurements that we could possibly do. And we can calculate uh, this. We probably would not be well advised to give an exact mean but we could give a range. And this range in which the mean is located, range in which the true mean is located, is located, is called the confidence interval. And uh, very often we want to be fairly sure that we are uh, in the right uh, area and therefore we want to be, let's say, 95% sure that we get the right uh, interval. So this would be the 95% confidence interval. And this 95% confidence interval is just calculated by x bar, that's our sample mean plus minus an adjustment factor. In this case, uh, it is a t factor. So that is an adjustment factor. And this adjustment factor depends on how big our sample is. So it depends on n and how confident we want to be. So if we go back to this uh, equation, x bar plus minus t times the standard deviation that we just calculated, divided by the square root of our observations by n. Now, this part here of the equation, that is also called the standard error, standard error of the mean and this part here t times the standard error of the mean that is frequently referred to as the margin of error Okay, so now with that under the belt, we can very 
simply do this calculation. All we need to uh, do is we need to say our confidence interval would be x bar plus minus t times the standard deviation that we just calculated. That was um, 4.08. That was our standard deviation divided by the square root of our sample size. That was 4. And that's quite easy to calculate. So we have uh, 4.08 divided by 2, and that gives us, uh, for the standard error of the mean, for this one here, this gives us 2.04. Now, all we need to do is we need to find this t, and for this purpose, we can use what is called a t-table, So here is a, a t-table, and as I said, it depends on how confident we want to be and the number of measurements. So in this case, we had four measurements, and the t, the corresponding t-value would be 3.8, 3.18. Sorry. So we said x bar plus minus t times 2.04 and for t we said that is 3.18 times 2.04 and if we calculate this this would be now our margin of error margin of error we get for the margin of error 3.18 times 2.04 and that gives us 6.49. So what we can do now with this is we can say we predict to be the, the true range where the mean of the population is. We believe that the true mean, or let me write it like that, the true mean of the population is given by x bar plus minus 6.49 and for the x bar we said that was 15 so we have the true mean of the population is somewhere 15 plus minus 6.49 so if we calculate that we calculate the lower bound and that is just simply our mean minus the margin of error. So here it would be 15 minus 6.49 and that would be 8.51. And the upper bound and that is x bar plus the margin of error. So 15 plus 6.49, and that gives us 21.49. So the true mean of this population, if we did this experiment a billion times, we would expect that this true mean is somewhere between 8.51 and 21.49. We cannot be much more precise uh, than that, uh, but that gives us already a good range where we would predict uh, the, the true mean of uh, all the datas, data sets that we can have.